sooner you make it, the better, because you know a rotten apple will spoil the you know a rotten customer, you know a rotten system, a rotten process. You know I don't know which piece I should buy. Would buy what? Make a decision and move forward. You have to keep business records. If you don't, you'll pay more taxes than if you do. How many of you kept your mileage coming here tonight? So the rest of you came here just to party, right? <laughs> Not business related purposes. This is a legitimate business activity. You, you can write off legitimate business activities. Work with a good accountant and see even if you haven't started your business, how can I capture my cost of starting my business and write that off. Now writing it off means it's tax dollars I don't have to pay. So if I have a $40 deduction, and that's $40 I get to keep. So I won't write off. That's the beauty of having a business. I go to Denver, Colorado to have some fun. I guarantee I'm going to do some business when out there. <laughs> now if I'm staying in a hotel room and uh, I go out to eat, and the person that I go out to eat with is the hotel room I can write off. But if the person I go out to eat with is not part of the business, I can't write that off. So there's rules and regulations. And a good accountant will teach you that pigs get fat and hogs get slaughtered. So don't go crazy with this write-off stuff. But you need to do that. If you buy a computer, or you buy some books, or you buy a camera, you buy equipment that you're going to use in your business, keep those receipts because you want to write those off if you don't have those records. If you have employee records where you're paying employees, and someone gets upset and they say they did overtime and you don't have a little sheet that they sign saying I worked 40 hours this week and then uh, their buddies go yeah he makes us work overtime all the time you know or they're sitting at their desk and they're answering the phone but they're eating their lunch and you didn't have them clock out for lunch and clock out and all this stuff's a pain in the neck but they can go back years and they can go back for a number of employees and then I don't like having a liability I don't know about. I don't want somebody walk in the door and say, you owe us $10,000. Right after I bought an expensive piece of equipment, <laughs> put all my money into something else for my future. Now they want $10,000, they want it right now. You know, so you better keep your records. Problem solving. I think this is the biggest problem in America today. I don't think Americans can think anymore. <laughs> I really don't. I get them all the time. I went to City Hall and I wanted to do this and they told me I couldn't do it. So your whole business hinges on you being able to do that and one person that you talked to told you you couldn't do it and why did they say that? I don't know, they said I couldn't do it. Really? You know? You've got to figure out if you want to do something, how do you get to yes? How do you make it happen? Just because there's an obstacle in the way doesn't mean they're in the way around it, under it, or some other way. So I go and I buy a building over here on Clyde Morris. You know, it's a house, and I'm going to put an office in there. So I go down to City Hall to get the stuff, and they say, huh, you can't open up there. That's on Hospital Medical. So what are you saying? I now bought property I can't do anything with. Hospital Medical. Let me see the rules and regulations of Hospital Medical. So I start reading through all of it, and I find apothecary. Well, so pharmacy, what's an apothecary, a pharmacy? Oh, they sell medical equipment and drugs. And, well, I have a wholesale drug license. I sell drugs, not to the consumers, but to agencies and things like that. And I sell medical equipment. So I go back in and say, oh, this is me right here. I don't think I explained it well enough. They go, oh, let me see it. Here's my wholesale drug license. Here's the equipment. So, oh, yeah, you're fine. Good. You're in there. When your competitor's beating you, when your, your employee's not doing what you want, when you can't pay the bills, be innovative. The winners are innovative. You know, they always thought we were cheating. One time they ran out of glucose strips because they closed down one touch in um, Puerto Rico because the factory had a contamination. And uh, nobody could get the strips where I had all these diabetic patients who needed that. To, they needed that. So I had a responsibility to get it for it. So I connected with the sales guy in, uh, in Louisiana, and he went to all of his people that had extras and sent it to me, and I was filling all my, and my competitors just didn't know how I was doing it. They thought I was doing something illegal, but it wasn't. 
So you, the more innovative you can be, the better you'll do. Personnel. Your key are your people. If you're going to be involved with other people, get the best you can get. Now, if I'm going to start a basketball team, I probably can't get, you know, I can't think of the super guys now. Kobe Bryant, I guess they're, he's not so much anymore, right? But I can't afford to get them on my team, but I'll get the best that I can. So you want to find, now, people don't understand, the biggest issue we have right now is getting good people. This is a process in the system like anything else. You should have a marketing plan to get people. You have a marketing plan to get customers. You identify who they are, how they get information, what words and pictures mean something to them, and you put it out there and they want to come to you. Why don't you do a marketing plan to get people? How many people want to work at Google? Everybody does. Man, what a cool place. I'm, they've got a marketing plan. You know, how many people join the Army? Because join the Army, be all you can be. You know, yeah, I want to do that. You know, those young guys that don't know any better. You know? Uh, I wouldn't do it. Uh, but you, know, you need to have that. You need to have a selection process. How do you know that this is really the right person? Oh, yeah, I'm really good at that. I'm really good at that. I'm really good. And my weakness is that I work too hard. That's my weakness. You know? How do you know? So you have to have a way to say, really? I, and one guy had a thing where he'd take them out to eat, and then uh, he had worked out a deal with the restaurant that they would mess up their food. And so they messed up the guy's food, and he said, have you heard this one? And so the guy's sitting there, and he's going, you know, I thought you ordered this, and that doesn't look anything like what you ordered. You know, and he goes, it's not. I ordered that. They brought me this. Well, why didn't you say anything? He said, I came here because I want to work for your company. I could really care less about eating. So, so but you have to have a process. This is key. I mean, look at what I've got in my organization. I started by myself. I've got a guy who ran all the bank branches, you know, for, for a certain group in this area that's doing all the financial side. Who could be better than that? I've got a, a, an attorney that has uh, got two master's degrees from the USL. I mean, the head of uh, Volusia County Economic Development used to work for me. The head of the incubator used to work for me. Key here. I always spent a lot of time and effort. And I was always recruiting. You should always be promoting and getting those resumes in. Hey, I don't have a spot for you right now, but then when someone has to move for whatever reason, you're ready. Priority setting. You can't do it all at one time. But you got to figure it out. If I'm going to start this business, I've got to do step one, two, three, four, five, six. I've got to do all these things, but I can't do them all right now. I'll get this one done, get this one done, get this one done. Maybe I allocate some to others, but I go through and say, what do I need to work on first? We talked about how do you get information. We talked about franchises. We didn't talk about purchasing an existing business. This can be very tricky. It's about the same thing as a franchise. It's already got established customers. It's got a track record. It's got processes. It's got a system. It's got someone there. Having the owner stay with you, as long as they're motivated to do so, not a bad strategy. But the minute they get their money, their motivation is diminished. I bought one company from a bunch of doctors up in Jackson, in uh, St. Augustine, and uh, they wanted a certain amount of money, and they said, we're going to support you like crazy when you buy it, just like we supported ourselves and everything. I said, yeah, sure you are, okay. Now here's what we're going to do. I want a no-compete agreement, and I want it for five years. Now I can't pay for referrals, but I can pay you not to compete with me. So it will be based on the revenue of this operation over the next five years. Common in business, common strategy. They didn't have to refer to me, nothing illegal, but they had a motivation to do so. If you um, Your idea hasn't passed the time test. A lot of times people jump into an idea at the end. It was great here, it was booming, everybody's hearing about it, and now it's starting to decline. And they go, I'm going to get in this. This has been really good. This is, well, you know, it's running out. This is not the time to get into it, like foreclosed homes. 